Welcome to the final episode of my deep dive on masking. Today we're going to be talking about masking in WebGL. Now WebGL is a huge topic and I'm not going to really talk about WebGL at all. What I'm really going to focus on is a specific part of WebGL. So rendering in WebGL is done through shaders and so we're going to be talking about how you apply masking and leverage the alpha channel within GLSL fragment shaders. So in future tutorials, I hope to get to how you can actually do WebGL and things like 3JS and Pixie.js and specify custom shaders for rendering. But in this episode, we're just going to be talking about how you can use masking and the alpha channel within GLSL fragment shaders. So let's dive in. Before we get started, I want to point you to a great resource for seeing what's possible with GLSL fragment shaders and also building them. So I want to point you to glslsandbox.com. And this is a website that's basically a library of fragment shaders that people have built. And you can go in and see them rendering in real time, but also see the code that runs them and tweak the code live and see how it impacts the shader. So this is a great way to play around with and explore how GLSL shaders are put together. So for our demo, what I'm going to do is work on this single quad that's rendered in WebGL. So you see the black rectangle here. And our checkerboard background layer is actually in CSS. So we're using a transparent canvas so that we can actually see the transparency and how that is influenced within our shader. So if we go into our code, I'm not going to get into the whole WebGL example. I'm using 3JS here to render this, but I really want to focus on the GLSL parts of the content. So we're going to just focus on the shaders that are being used and down the road I'll do a tutorial on how you can use custom GLSL shaders within um, WebGL or 3JS content. So the first shader that we come across is our vertex shader and this sets the position of each of our vertices within our geometry. So the variable that it sets is GL position and this is multiplying the projection matrix by the model view matrix and then by the position of the vertex within space. So we're not going to worry about this too much because this is really the most basic example of the vertex shader and it's just going to render the content the way we intend. So if we look at our next shader, this is our fragment shader and this is where we're actually going to be able to manipulate the colors that are being drawn onto the screen. So these run for each pixel within our fragment. You can see we're setting this variable GL frag color and we're setting it to a type vec4, so a vector4. And this represents the red, green, blue, and alpha channels, so that all these colors that we can influence for each pixel. And this allows us to draw those colors back onto the screen. So right now it's actually drawing the color black because we have RGB set to black at zero with an alpha of one. So I can actually go in and adjust these values. Let's say I want to make this, the rectangle red. So I can go in and set the red value to 1. And if we go back in and look at our content, you'll see it now draws it red. Again, I can go back in, change the red value back to 0, and instead change the green value to 1, and we'll get a green rectangle. I can do the same thing for blue and we get the same effect. Likewise, I can go in and adjust the alpha channel to 0.5 and we get a semi-transparent black rectangle. So this is how we influence the alpha channel of our content by playing around with this alpha value. And I can continue to go in and change the RGB values as well. So let's say we want this to be yellow, I can adjust the values so that becomes yellow and we'll have a rendered semi-transparent yellow rectangle. So all this is great for coloring the entire quad the same color, but what if we want to do more interesting effects? Well, then we get more into UV mapping and this allows us to adjust how the colors and the textures are going to be applied to the vertices of our geometry. So in order to do this, we need to create a variable in our vertex shader that's going to store the UVs. And this is going to pass it along to our fragment shader. So we make this a varying type vec2 and call it VUV. So that's our variable name is VUV. And then in our main method, we're going to 
set the VUV to the UV. And this is just a variable that comes into us from 3JS. Next, what we want to do is go into our fragment shader and again, define that variable that we're getting from our vertex shader. So now we have access to the UVs from our vertices and we can use the X and Y coordinates of those vertices to influence the colors that are rendered. For example, we can use the red value and set it to the X coordinate of our UV and you can see how that converts our yellow rectangle into a gradient so that it goes from green now to yellow along the X axis. And I can go ahead and make that fully opaque just so you can see it better. So what we can also do is we can take that UV value and apply it to the alpha channel. So now we have it going from transparent on the left to opaque on the right. And this is an example of how you can do a semi-transparent gradient within a GLSL shader. So the next thing I wanna show is how we can actually use an image to manipulate the alpha channel so we can create image masks. So what we need to do is we need to pass in a texture to our GLSL fragment shader. And we do this through WebGL by passing it in as a uniform. So we collect that in our fragment shader by creating this variable uniform of type sampler 2D. And we'll just call this texture one. So next what we need to do is we need to map our texture to our quad based on the UV. So we do this by using the method texture 2D, passing in the texture and then passing in our UV coordinates. And we'll collect this as a VEC4, which we'll call texture. Then what we can do is access the channels of that texture. So we can access, for example, the red channel. And because this is a grayscale image, all the channels are gonna be the same. So here we can set our alpha channel to texture R, which is the red channel. And if we test that, you can see that it's actually using the texture to apply that alpha channel. And we can go back in and set this to black just so you can see it better. And what we have here is kind of a photo of Yosemite. It's this inverted mask that you can see. So if we go back in and we do one minus our red value, we can invert the mask. And you can see here, we have this transparent mask of Yosemite tunnel view. And then we can go in and continue to play with the red, green, and blue values like we would normally. Now I can go back in and actually show you the actual mask by just setting our GL frag color to that texture. You can see our grayscale mask that we're using. So you can continue to play around with the values of each channel, the red, green, blue, or alpha, using the texture itself or just manually adjusting these values. So you can create really interesting results. So now I wanna go through some examples of how we can actually apply this. And we created a website on masking showing off some of these techniques. So here you can see we have this interesting eclipse effect and we're actually using fragment shaders to do a lot of these lighting effects and the plasma effects that you're seeing. But if you look at the gradient mesh at the bottom, you can see that it goes from opaque to transparent as it fades in the background. And we're just using the same gradient technique using the UVs and their position to fade from opaque to transparent in the alpha channel. If we Go a little further down, you can see another example where we're, we have these hand meshes, these polygons sort of animating in space. But if you look at these particles that exist inside the hands, they're actually using the hands as a mask. So we're able to use another WebGL canvas and pass that into our GLSL fragment shader to use it as the texture for our mask. So applying that to the alpha channel. If we go a little further down, you can see another example where we're using 2D canvas to draw these letters and then using those as the textures for our masks that animate around. So these lines and particles are being masked in GLSL from this canvas. And this is just another example of how we can use 2D canvas, WebGL, or even video as textures inside of GLSL for masking on our alpha channel.
If we go a little further down, you can see another example where we have this globe spinning. And again, we're just using the UVs and creating that gradient effect so that as we go to the left, they become transparent. As they go to the right, they become opaque. And then we just have another shape drawn behind it to create that illusion that it's fading from one thing to another. So a little further down, we have this sort of um, dancing, glitchy effect going on. And this is, again, all done with the fragment shader and using some interesting math and algorithms to create these distortions. But we're using an image that's being passed in as our main source for the alpha channel and then just distorting things from there. And then we're able to swap out the images periodically to create some interesting effects. And if we go further down, you can see we have these diamonds that are animating around. But if you look at that circle texture that's being drawn on this plane, you can see that it's actually masking out a portion of it where we have these particles flying around. So again, just using some variables and numbers that we're passing into the GLSL fragment shader as variables to adjust this mask property. So those are just some interesting examples of how we can use masking combined with WebGL for some interesting visual effects. So that's it for my series on masking. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.